What is up my aesthetic boys, it's Fresh, back with another video. If you're interested in multi-million dollar tax mistakes and prog tanks winding up in the residential neighborhoods of London, you've somehow come to the right video. Customer service dictates that I'm more important than a child or common sense. I work in a grocery store that includes a post office station. It's in the middle of a community and a lot of our customers are regulars. It was a day just like any other, and I was serving on the store side of things when the last customers in store came up, a woman and her granddaughter. We were chatting away, granddaughter was showing me her most recent toy, and grandmother was telling me what they were off to do that afternoon. As I was giving the change, a woman stormed past the post office. Grandmother noticed at this point that we had some nice deals on an end facing the tills, so she grabbed a pack of something quickly before they left, bearing in mind that I still had yet to say goodbye. I proceed to scan the item through for her when this other woman at the post office pipes up. Excuse me, she exclaimed in a very rude tone. I was here before them. I responded that I'd be with her in a minute and that these customers were here before she came into the store. I was particularly pissed at the woman's attitude given the fact that she'd behaved in such a way without a real reason, in front of a sweet little two-year-old girl who is very impressionable at that age. Anyway, I scanned them through and said my goodbyes waving and smiling as I always do. I then made my way to the post office where this woman with a face like fizz hit me with the line, customer service dictates that you serve me first if I'm here before them. I calmly smiled and told her, customer service also dictates that I can reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. Her face dropped, still furious, and she asks, are you refusing to serve me then? I looked her right in the eyes and said, certainly seems that way. Genuinely one of my favorite interactions with a rude customer to date. Okay, now making customers angry isn't always the best idea, especially as a low paid likely employee, even if you hit him with an absolute zinger, and I mean spit roasted, flame broiled, medium well, ardent, boiling, broiling, searing, fervent, fervid, fiery one liner, like it sure seems that way. Fortunately, OP goes and clarifies that her manager found it funny. As a commenter points out, that kind of makes or breaks the success of this interaction. Also, Customer service does not at all dictate that you need to serve them first. What religious text are you referencing? What unspoken doctrine of the minimum wage laborer do you refer to that gives you the gall to say such a phrase with confidence in front of a two-year-old? Really showed them, Karen. Way to go. Hell hath no fury like a teenager scorned. Cue hazy flashback to 1997 or 98. Growing up, my family ran a business dealing with water and wastewater pumps. By the time I was in high school, I worked for them outside of school as needed, and I had grown up around the industry. At the time of this story, I was 16, maybe 17. I got a few funny looks out in the field sometimes, but my age normally wasn't a problem. This time, it was. Many sales make you do bids for the project. You go to the builder's exchange, which is basically a library for plans and blueprints. You pull the plans, get to the part applicable to you, and see what they want or need. Then you submit a price that you think will win you the job. Many times the plans will actually specify a model that meets their needs, in which case you bid that or a comparable one. Other times they'll give specifications and a selection and matching it is up to you. You go through the books and software for curves, which is a chart that shows how it flows under load. This time was the former. The job was a retrofit and expansion on the city plant. The engineer had specified a model of pump he wanted and I'd matched its specs. Put in a submittal for approval on the substitution as required. The substitution gets approved and we're cleared to enter a bid. We proceed forward putting together the bid. At one point I have the plans in front of me and I'm looking at the drawings. I don't like what I'm seeing which is a lot of pipe and a lot of distance. I check and recheck and come up with the same result. The total head, head is how far you're pumping, calculated by distance and including losses from the pipe, is too much for the pump that was specified, like way too much. This puts the pump way outside its curve, it's going to be deep into overload. I used my corrected numbers and found a proper match, but not only was it significantly more expensive, but physically different and would require larger visions. So I put together a revised submittal with the numbers I ran and the recommended pump. It included the math from the drawings and the curves. I faxed it over to the engineer's office, and then I called him. It did not go well. Not only did he not listen to me, he was more than happy to lecture me. How dare I, a kid, tell him how to do his job? 
No, he would not accept any revisions or resubmittals. I had no idea what I was talking about and I, personally, was no longer to have contact on this project. He did not use nice words. This couldn't stand. It was going to cause serious problems down the line. So I did the only thing I could think of. I found the contact for city planning and told him. Made it about three minutes into trying to explain who I was and why I was calling before he cut me off and told me to refer to the engineer and to not contact him again. Tried again for someone else later on and did not make it past the receptionist. As you wish. I took the revised submittal and filed it in the back of the job file and moved on. I wasn't needed for the rest and I had other things to do plus school. Fast forward nearly two years, I'm now going to college, still working for my folks as needed. Construction complete, get called in for startup. Goes smoothly as it should and the countdown to destruction begins. I think the first one went after about three months? Only made it that long because those pumps are really well built. They had to emergency ship in a replacement. Second one a week or three after, then another and another, then the replacements start failing. The whole time, these are being invoiced, including emergency shipping, and having to run out to start them up every time. They have no choice. This is the model the pads were cast for and the piping run for. You can't directly substitute something else, like, say, the correct pumps. Then it gets really fun. They start returning the burnt out units for warranty. The factory starts receiving these and tearing them down for failure analysis. I told our rep straight up that they were being run way outside their design point knowingly and he was not amused. Warranty is denied and they are billed for the diagnostic time and shipping. The manufacturer was in Germany, by the way, shout out to the fine folks at KSB. These units are neither small nor light, plus these are being shipped as emergency orders so it's not cheap. Warranties officially denied to the buyer. We tell them in no uncertain terms that this isn't a problem with the units. This is now almost a year after the plant was due to come online. Now things really start to go down. City council gets involved because this is a municipal plant. Lawsuits are threatened and a council meeting is scheduled to discuss further action. I marked the day and arranged with my teachers to take a few days off. I didn't live close to home. Drove three and a half hours to see my parents and to visit their filing cabinet. Right where I left it. Out came the revised submittal and a quick trip to Kinko's, the local copy shop, provided some wonderful blown up posters of said submittal as well as the proofs behind it. The next day I drove another two and a half hours up to said city, had a lovely meatball sandwich at a restaurant right across the street from the council building, and showed up to the council meeting. I even dressed up nice for the occasion. I didn't say anything to anyone, just sat in the back in my chair with my rolled up posters next to me and waited. It took about 40 minutes. The council finally brings up the plant. Guess who comes up to testify in front of the council? It's engineer. He goes on for about 10 minutes just disparaging our company and talking about how we're denying the warranties. Basically states the problem is due to the substitution and that our pumps were substandard. This is a loss now counted in the millions between the downtime and replacement costs and rejected warranties, labor, etc. Council swallows all his BS hook, line, and sinker. He sits down and the council starts discussing among themselves. This is my cue. I stand up, approach the podium, and wait for them to notice me. It doesn't take long as I'm a teenager in a city council meeting. I introduce myself and unroll the posters. Hi, I'm Crispy Silicone from Going to Ruin Your Day Incorporated. Before you proceed any further, you should probably have a look at this, which is the revised submittal I sent to the engineer prior to the initial bid. You'll note the date. Also attached, you'll find the supporting calculations, relevant drawings from the original plans, and the recommendation of a larger suitable unit. You'll also see the fax acknowledgement sheet showing it was received by his office. Immediately after sending that, I contacted Engineer directly and advised him of these issues. He declined. I was told outright to keep my nose out of things I didn't understand and to leave engineering to the adults. He was well aware the units would self-destruct if run at this point. After that, I called your planner, who refused to listen and referred me back to the engineer. If you'd like, I'd be more than willing to contact our phone providers so they can verify that fax and those calls were placed. I'm grinning like the Cheshire Cat at this point, and I'm not holding back the evil one bit. I'm sure I looked like a psychopath. Couldn't help it. Also, didn't care. Dead silence. So yeah, the warranties are void as all the units were operated well beyond their design point. 
I still stand by the revised submittal, so feel free to call when you're ready. I'll leave these here. Still completely silent. The entire council looks like I just dropped my pants and mooned them. Then, after a few seconds, one of the ladies in the council gave me a, thank you, Mr. Silicone. You can go now. I left my posters on the podium, turned, and walked, making full eye contact with the engineer as long as I could with that same grin. He looked like he was probably going to vomit. I didn't stick around to check. I stopped by to give my folks a hug on the way back to school, and that was the end of my involvement. No idea what happened to engineer or planner, but the city paid every invoice in full without another peep. They had to continue to purchase replacement after replacement to limp it along while simultaneously trying to refit the plant. They finally got it fixed after about another year, but by that time, I can't even imagine how far over the projected estimate they actually were. Ugh, I do love this story, I promise, but I also hate it at the same time. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I think there are some really good things that tax money goes to, like schools, roads, utilities, like, I understand their use. But paying millions of extra dollars because an engineer couldn't do his job right? That ain't coming out of anyone's pockets but the taxpayers. I think the only people who really came out on top of this are KSB, the manufacturer OP referenced. They're a multi-billion dollar international Germany-based pump company that employs over 16,000 people and just got a nice little boost from good old American incompetence. Getting all my paid time off paid out. Despite working in a high-stress, high-tech sales role, I believe that when you're on vacation or paid time off, you don't work and disconnect. Whenever I was on PTO and my manager would request something from me, I would email, are you asking me to work on my time off? The answer was always something like, yes, I really need this done. After I worked, I would reclaim the vacation time in our employee portal. I saved every email. Last week, HR launched a new portal that allows us to see vacation time, sick time, etc. My vacation balance was like two weeks short. When I alerted HR to it, they said that they took back a chunk of time I had reclaimed because they felt I was abusing the system. Then I sent them every email from my manager asking me to work, documenting that it truly wasn't time off. I also included a link to the state law stating that even a minute worked in the day counted as a full day because I'm salaried. My PTO balance was quickly returned. Man, you gotta love unions. Boys, you gotta love labor laws that prevent employers from screwing over their employees on this kind of thing. If it's paid time off, it's paid time off. You know what I call working during paid time off? Working. Yep, that's it. I trash the seemingly frequent incompetence of the government quite a bit, but I would like to note that private employers can be just as, if not sometimes, even more incompetent lady wants coffee from a fresh pot that's right a fresh pot yeah stories about me take that guys now this happened more than 10 years ago but i consider it one of my finest moments i was working at tim hortons the canadian coffee chain as an assistant manager half my shifts were spent in the office the other half in the drive through relieving employees for breaks it's mid-afternoon and it's pretty slow a van pulls up on the speaker and i answer welcome to tim hortons how may i help you Lady says, Hi, I want a medium coffee double-double from a fresh pot. I don't want something that's been sitting there for hours. I want a fresh pot. It's important to note that she's talking really slowly and really loud and forceful, like she's sure we're all a bunch of high school dropouts who don't know how to make a cup of coffee. It's degrading, honestly. Our coffee pots are timed for 20 minutes from the second they stop brewing. We had this white chalk pencil thing that would write directly on the hot pot. So while the lady is repeating her desire for a fresh pot, my coworker has already made the coffee from the pot that technically was still dripping. Fresh pot, got it. Please pull ahead, miss. I tell the staff that I'm personally going to handle this as I already know that this isn't going to be the end of her rudeness. The lady comes to the window, drops her change in my open hand angrily, the coins bouncing off each other and nearly winding up on the cement outside. I roll my eyes and hand her the coffee. As I'm putting the coins into the till, I'm watching her out of the corner of my eye. She opens the lid, smells the coffee, takes a tiny sip, then says, Excuse me, I wanted a fresh pot. This coffee has been sitting there for hours. No, it hasn't. My coworker actually pulled the still brewing pot out and poured your coffee from that pot. You're wrong. I know this is old. This is not Tim Horton's coffee. Smell this. Taste this. 
She passes the cup to her horrified female passenger who does not want to get involved, but leans towards the cup and takes a sniff. See? This is not Tim Horton's coffee. I know Tim Horton's coffee. You're right, ma'am. It's Robin's coffee. What do you want us to do? Robin's Donuts being our big competitor at the time. Lady turning tomato red and screaming, I want my coffee from a fresh pot! I stick out my hand, grab the coffee back, and start walking around the corner to the front of the store. My coworker hands me a new coffee, but I reply, No, I have to find the freshest pot. So once I'm around the corner, out of view, I remove the old lid, stick a new lid on the coffee, and wait a minute. My coworkers are watching what I'm doing, and I'll try to cover a smirk. I return to the window, hand the coffee out, and say, Here you go. The lady opens the lid, takes a whiff, and a long sip of the exact same coffee, and... See? This is what Tim Horton's coffee should taste like. Well, that coffee came from the exact same pot as the last coffee I gave you. Her jaw drops, and you can see the blood draining from her face. She takes another small sip and then says, No, this doesn't taste right. Does this smell right? No, I want my money back. She hands me the coffee, and I hand her back her change, and she drives off. Thankfully, she never visited my store again. Call it a Chick-fil-A, my pleasure kind of policy, call it whatever you want. This lady shouldn't have to put up with that kind of BS, honestly. OP did, fortunately, choose the best way to call out a liar. I had someone come into my Discord server trying to catfish people, asking if anyone wanted to chat with a certain innuendo, and then send them fake pictures alongside some really bizarre lewd content involving open jars of Nutella. After being banned, they had the audacity to come back into my server to complain to me personally about being removed. It took a two second reverse image search to find the pictures they claimed to be themselves first appeared online in a Chive article from like 2015, at least four years ago. Without telling them of my discovery, I asked the person's age to confirm that this wasn't anything illegal, you know, doing my due diligence. The catfisher responded by saying they had just recently turned 18, so I responded with, well, that's not so good. These pictures have been on the internet for more than four years, so either you're sending inappropriate images of a child, or, considerably more likely, you're not who you say you are. They never responded. That's the wrong kind of tank. With the UK being the UK, you need permission from the council to do anything on your plot of land. One gentleman owned a plot of land on Mandela Way in London and wanted to develop some property on the land. However, the council did not want this to go through, so turned him down. Cue his malicious compliance. He wrote to the council asking to put a tank on the land. The council thought he meant a septic tank. What he in fact meant was a T-34 Russian tank used during the Prague Spring of 1968. When he placed the tank on the land, he pointed the barrel in the direction of the council building as a final screw you. The council can't remove it as technically they gave him full permission to place the tank on the land. People, myself included, spend a lot of time analyzing the plausibility, I guess, of stories on Reddit. Let's face it, most of them are made up, but a large chunk of them are entertaining enough and just barely based in reality so as to maintain a certain suspension of disbelief, a bit of plausible deniability, if you will. This story needs neither of the above. It is verifiably real. Can you imagine someone pulling over in your neighborhood to ask for directions and you say, okay, so you're gonna take a left at stop sign, straight two blocks down, or right at the T-34 tank on a Mandela, and then you'll see the market down the way. Thank you to everyone who watched this video. Be sure to subscribe for more daily Reddit content. Drop a like if you liked the video, and I will see you all tomorrow.